Hi everybody, Mike Griffin here again, and today I'm going to tell you about something that I really like. You know, I've always had to use distilled water for one thing or another, and in the grocery stores it used to be about a dollar a gallon, but that's creeping up and it's getting even more expensive. So I looked into the, could I make distilled water at home? And it turns out you can, uh, using these distillers that you can buy right on Amazon. Well, uh, I went looking and I compared a bunch of different ones and I ended up buying this one from Mega Home. Now I like this one, it's UL listed, has a lot of features, but basically it's just simple to use. And it really makes distilled water just like you would find in the grocery store and it makes it one gallon at a time. Now what is distilled water? Well basically distilled water is what you get if you boil the water and then you capture the steam and you let that drip into a pot. And what do you get out of that? Well, minerals that are in the water, little particles of minerals that are in your water, uh, will end up settling in the bottom of the boiling chamber because it, does, it doesn't go up with the evaporated water. And the clean water without minerals in it is what's left. It's what's actually left up here in this dome. And then it drips down into the pot. So you end up with a gallon of distilled water. Now it takes about five hours for this to happen, but that's okay. I mean, you press a button, you walk away, and five hours later you come back and you got a gallon of distilled water. Now a lot of people use these for CPAP machines. They use them for steam irons. Um, they use them for just any place that uh, you can even use them in your uh, cooling system for your car if you want to, because you know that hard residue you might get on a shower head or you get into a coffee pot after you use it a while or you get into an appliance like this? That hard residue, those are the minerals that are left over that you have to scrape. It's a scale that you have to scrape. So you're not going to have to do that as often when you use distilled water. So distilled water is, uh, is a, a good thing to have, especially for machines like CPAP machines. That's the most popular use, I think typically in the home, but besides CPAP machines, you can use it to, you can use it as drinking water. You, you, I use it in my ice maker because it's, uh, which I've done another review on, and you can even use it to water your plants, or a lot of people have a lot of different things about it. You can drink it, um, but uh, anyway, so what happened is I went out looking for a distiller. Now, what are the current prices? Well, if you go to the grocery store now, you can get a gallon of distilled water, I can at least, for about a dollar and a quarter. But sometimes when they're in short supply, it's a dollar fifty a gallon. And lately the grocery stores have been in pretty short supply. So I like the idea that that it's it's gonna be cheaper to me. And how cheap is it gonna be? I'm gonna explain that in a little bit. Um, now, you make your own, and why is that a good thing? Well, the price, that's a good thing. And like I said, we'll talk about that later. You don't have to worry about whether it's available in the grocery store or not. You don't have to lug the bottles of water out to your car, up to your house, and whatever. And you don't have to dispose of all that plastic bottles when you're done. Now, uh, this particular one comes with a glass container that the water is stored in as it's made. And when you're done making it, you can pour it in any container you want. Um, but uh, some people have a thing about they don't want to store distilled water in plastic because they're saying it'll, after a while the plastic degrades and whatnot. So it's a good idea if you're going to be doing it long term maybe to get yourself some glass gallon containers to keep your distilled water in. Okay, so you make your own. We know you can. And, and, and oh, and you don't have to dispose of all that plastic anymore either. Um, okay, so... What about this particular machine? Well, this is a mega home machine, and I got this one. I got the heavy du duty model, and the heavy duty model uses something, it's a higher grade, it's called 316 of stainless steel. Now they say you can actually put seawater in this thing and distill it, and what happens is the steel can stand up over a longer period of time to harder chemicals and, and, uh, and the deposits of minerals. Now you're gonna clean it out now and then, and uh, but uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, you, the standard one they sell is fine for most people. On Amazon now, that's roughly $279. This one's $329 with the upgraded steel boil chamber. Okay, uh, now, so what does this consist of? Well, when you get it, you have the boil chamber, and you have the dome, and then you have the uh, pot that you can boil it in. It comes kind of disassembled. You have to put this band 
together and all. And you can look at other videos if you want to see that. But it just comes. It took me about uh, 15 minutes to get it out of the box, put it together. It doesn't take long to do that. And uh, this one is, operates on standard 120 volt power and it's uh, also UL listed, which some of them aren't, which means it's already been checked out for safety and everything else. Now, how do you use this thing? Well, what you do first is you remove the dome from the, uh, from the boil chamber. And then once, the, once that's removed, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, go to the inside. You're going to look at the inside of the boil chamber. Now you'll see there's deposits and things or sediment at the bottom of the boil chamber, but you can clean that out every once in a while. It's pretty easy using some uh, chemical they send to you and or you can just wipe it out with a paper towel now and then. I've hardly cleaned it at all since I've had it because when you actually activate it and you boil the water essentially, um, it's going to, it's not going to take those impurities or those minerals and put them in your distilled water. They're going to stay at the bottom of the pot. So you want to clean it out periodically and, and uh, keep the bottom clean from getting too messy and they provide something to do that with that comes with it. Uh, also, inside of the uh, dripping portion of the dome is a, uh, a place where you can put these little charcoal uh, filters they send you. I think they send you five of them and you can slip it in there when, uh, whenever you want. And the water also goes through that filter. Now, a lot of people are concerned about how much plastic the water actually touches. Well, all the bottom here is stainless steel. But the top has some plastic, but the, but the inside top of this is stainless steel. And it touches a little bit of plastic, I think, as it comes out of here. But basically, uh, they might even put metal pipes in there, but, but it's very little. And, and so uh, you, it hits the glass chamber and boom, you've got, the, uh, you've got the water. So how to use it is you're going to fill the pot up. You fill it with one gallon of water from your tap or from anywhere else you're going to get it. And then you replace the lid when you, after you fill the water, you replace the dome back up. And then you stick the um, tariff under it and it, you have a little, uh, the top of this turns. Whoops, I'm pouring water out because I already, I made some before. And it's, it has a thing where you can turn the top to cover the spout or you can open the spout up and you put the spout under the, the thing and then just, and then you press the, re the button over here, the reset button and it starts making coffee. I mean, coffee starts making distilled water. Uh, it's a lot like a coffee maker. It reminds me of one. So um, it's very easy to use. Now, uh, what about questions you might have? I know when I looked for something like this, I had questions, of course. One was about cleaning it. How often do you have to clean? Well, I kind of addressed that. And you get this bottle of this uh, stuff called water residue cleaner. It's really citric acid. And you use that, just put a little bit in there, and you swish it around and you uh, take the paper towel and you clean it and then you rinse it out a couple of times and, and uh, that should do the trick. Uh, but that's, it's pretty easy. The filters, they provide several that go in this spout I told you about. Um, how loud is the motor? Well, it's loud enough that, uh, I'll let you hear it for a second. You can see that it's loud enough that uh, you might not want it running all day in your kitchen. So I have it in a room over there with my ice maker in a laundry room. And it's, uh, it's not real loud, but it's loud enough that it would be um, a little irritating if you kept it in your kitchen, maybe, unless you run it at night when you're sleeping. Just start it. Five hours later, it'll finish. It does seem to shut itself off, and that's a good thing, of course. It's, uh, and, and so after five hours, it's done. Does it get hot? Well, of course, when it boils that water, it puts a little heat out up top, so you want to leave some clearance up there. Now, I actually took up a heat gun or a thermo thermometer, and I, I checked it, and it typically ran between 98 and 110 degrees up there at the top while it was running in full mode. Okay, and uh, the last thing is how much does it cost to run it? Well, let's look at that. What does it cost to run it? Now, what happened, I went out and I bought a meter that shows the wattage while something's running. I've got a link to that below, as well as links for these, uh, the standard and the upgraded mega home distiller. But uh, I bought a little meter, it wasn't much. And then um, I plugged it in the wall and I checked it. 
So at, when I was running it, you can see it's a little over 600 watts. While it was running, uh, I measured uh, 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 probably, in the, it was right around 617 watts, 617 watts. Now, it takes five hours to distill that water. So if you take 617 watts in an hour, and you multiply it times five hours, you're going to get 3,085 watts of total uh, use, power use, to make one gallon of distilled water. And that sounds like a lot, but in my area, um, uh, we pay about 12 cents, uh, give or take, for a, a kilowatt hour. So if you take that 3,085 hours and you divide it by 1,000, you get the number of kilowatt hours, which in this case is about 3.085 uh, kilowatt hours multiplied times 12 cents comes out to about 37 cents a gallon. So now when I go to the grocery store and I pay a dollar 25 for a gallon, I can look the other way because I can go home and make it for 37 cents a gallon. But you're going to ask, when does the payoff come in? Because you just paid $329 for the machine. Well, did a little more math on that. And if it cost me 37 cents a gallon to make it, and uh, I'm saving about a dollar a gallon, right? And if I make about five gallons a week, then I'm saving about, uh, uh, what am I saving there? About $240 a year. So uh, now I paid $329 for the machine. So basically what that means is that after uh, about 17 months, I will break even. I know it sounds like a long time, but uh, that's not quite a year and a half. Uh, so I'm still spending money I'm, I'm still paying pretty much regular rates for the distilled water, but in 17 months, I'll be saving about 240 a year or about $20 a month off on making distilled water. So uh, the summary of this, I really like it. Um, I, I think it's uh, so easy to use, no more lug in the water. I can make as much as I want anytime I want. I've had neighbors that have said to me, hey, uh, how about making my water? I'll pay you, you know, uh, 30 cents, I mean, you know, 50 cents a gallon or something. Um, but it's um, it's just so easy to use um, when you um, uh, uh, when you get it. It's the setup is quick, and all you have to do is just uh, take it out of the box, the, the pieces out of the box, assemble the thing. Uh, you have to plug in the two electric plugs that come with it. They're very easy. You can't miss how to put them in, and then you're in business. So if you check the links below. And you can find the link for the one I've got, the upgraded 316, or you can find the link for the standard one. And, uh, and that's fine. The standard one's just fine. And uh, you'll also see the link for that wattage meter in case you're interested in uh, checking things like that out yourself. Um, so um, that's it. That's all I've got. And appreciate it if you use those links because it helps me uh, look forward to making more of these things and trying to help you guys out because this is something that I've really enjoyed. Till next time. Take it easy.